I'm sure I was just thinking when he, when he spoke about the um, chairman of the board. Of course, we know the chairman of the board is Christ. God is the head of the marriage, the family, because he instituted the marriage, just as the chairman of the board would be for a company. And so he is a silent witness. When you think God isn't looking, when you think God isn't there, when you think he hasn't showed up or he's not there in the midst of your situation and your circumstance, he's like, I'm omnipresent. I'm right there in the midst of that thing. And so as she even talked about it earlier, we have to know that if, listen, Marriage without God don't work. Marriage without God does not work. So you can see them on the on the, an alarm light and, and sitting up on the hill and the houses in the hill and, and living that life. But let me tell you, it's only temporary. It's only temporary. So we're here to just kind of be transparent for you today. To let you know, yeah, we, we're, we're bringing corporate strategies to fulfilling God's purpose in a covenant marriage. We're trying to help you win today in your marriage. Amen. So that when the going gets tough, you don't get going. So you learn how to stay in the test of time because that's what you said I do to. Yeah. All right? Yeah. That's what you said I do to. Yeah. And so we want to understand that. I want you to picture something for a moment. And a lot of us forget that God is always present. When we got married, God was there. That's right. Because God is always present in what? In his house. So when we got married, God was there. When you got home, God was there. When you're together with your wife, God is there. When you have problems, God is there. So God never leaves us. Think about this for a moment. Who do we go to when we have problems? Most of the times we go to our friends or families. God said, just talk to me. I just want you to tell me what it is that you want me to do. If we were just to understand that and listen, God can take care of all of our problems. God said, greater is he in us than he that is in this world. Amen. And through Christ, we can do what? We can do all things. Amen. So just think about that for a moment. For married people, uh, married couples, when you're home alone, you're not alone. God is with you, and he's just waiting, especially for men. I think for men, it's harder for us to be more spiritual than it is for a woman. God is waiting for them, because we're responsible for the home. To take our stand, you know, it wasn't until I took my stand that this this didn't, this didn't happen because I didn't take my stand. This happened because I took my stand. That's right. See, I was on the other side when I had to make the call for a counselor. Uh-huh. That was me. Yeah. That wasn't my wife. I called for a counselor. Well. I thought it was because I was over fifty. I started thinking different. I didn't want to spend no money. I wanted to save money. No, I had other issues that I had to deal with. I didn't, it didn't really matter to me whether or not my wife went to counseling with me. I was going by myself. Come on, That's all right. So take the stand that you need to take. Go to counseling. I know counseling is like a taboo word, a name that people don't like, especially for minorities. I'm Hispanic. Uh-huh. And you know what? We, I don't even know if we know about counseling, but <laughs> it's, it's true. Because we don't, it, it's so different with the way I was raised. I was raised Catholic, but it's just so different. You know, we, 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 we look at the example of our mother and father, yeah. uh, but it's not too much outside of that. That's right. Amen. So it is different in that respect. But I just, you know, I'm going to talk to the men. I want you to be more spiritual. Be more conscious of where God is. Because God is everywhere. God is with you. Everything that you do, every decision that you have to make. Speak to God about it. Talk to God about it. And he shall direct your path. And all that you do, he will direct your path. That's right. Bless the Lord. You know, sometimes we, um, even being up here, you have to you have to just know who's for you, and you got to do planning, you got to do preparation, and you got to do all of those things. But understand, even as the president and the vice president, 
as the head of the house and the president of the marriage corporation, it was our upbringing. As Deacon Richard said earlier, it was our upbringing that began, you know, our schooling, our parents, what they instilled in us, what they showed us, what they modeled before us. So I, I remember um, the man of God was here not long ago, and I remember him saying, stop blaming everything on generational curses. Understand that you have the power to control your own atmosphere. You can speak to your own atmosphere, and you don't have to say, well, my mom had it, and my daddy had it, and my sister had it, so I'm going to have it. Well, then, yeah, you're going to have it. Because you keep saying that same thing over and over and over again. And then we teach that to our children, and before we know it, they'll be like, Mommy, didn't you have, and I think I got, no. No, you don't. No, you don't. You have health, you have wellness. You have fullness of life. So we have to learn to start really allowing this thing called the tongue to work on our behalf. We've been watching it. We've been watching it work. There's a sister you're going to see today. Her name is Almisha Tinkersley. And I promise you, she shows you how it works. The power of the tongue. It's serious. It's serious. Take your finances from a zero and bring it up to nothing. Bring it up to something when you didn't have nothing. Watch your words over your own life. Watch what you're speaking over your own marriages. Watch what you're saying about your own relationship and your person. And yes, learn to look in the mirror and encourage yourself sometimes. Because we gotta rise above, people. We're in a new year. This is just the first quarter. We haven't even touched the surface. We're just in the second month of a new year. Hallelujah. Gracias. How are you seeing it? That's right. How are you seeing your year? Yes. How are you seeing your year? Listen, God established roles. There's roles within marriage. There's roles in this thing called the relationship. Y yes. You know, there is a husband, there's a wife, and, and if you're blessed and, 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 and if God chose to see fit, then there's children. What are you teaching them? What are you modeling before them? Well, I want you uh, to write this down. Well, I'm going to give you a script, couple of scriptures, but now I'm going to give you Amos 3, 3. Can two walk together lest they be agreeable? It's important in your marriage. It's important in your marriage. Amos 3, 3. Can two walk together unless they be agreeable? Listen, in your home, you have an accounting department in your home. We're going to talk about the departments in the home. Uh, write this down. You have an uh, accounting department in your home. Who's responsible for the accounting department in your home? It's just like corporate. It's just like corporate. Some people do the responsibilities of the accounting department, but it's really, is that your qualifications? Do you qualify? to take care of the bills in your home, to write the checks, wow. the budget. Do you qualify for that? That's, That's something you have to ask, ask yourself. Yes. If you do not qualify, then you shouldn't be doing it. Yes. Get training. Now, and I'm gonna give you an example. When I first got married to my wife, I didn't write checks. I mean, my mother and my father took care of everything. They, 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 they took care of us. So when she says, church of God in Christ, well, guess what? We married now, and you the man, you got to write the check. I said, really? I don't know how to write checks. And I was being honest. I did not know how to write checks. This is 28 years ago. And I said, well, you know what? I'll try. So I had a whole lot of bounce checks for a little bit. I figured, just write the checks. You want me to write checks, I pay the bills. It's easy to write checks and pay bills, isn't it? I mean, it really is. You just write the check and you pay the bills. But you got to have money in the account. That's the other part that people don't tell us. She said write checks. She didn't say balance the checkbook. She didn't say make sure it's money in Write checks. So it's important that you understand the process of, of the accounting department. Okay, it's so important that you understand that. You know, that kind of department really runs that house future. That's right. If you want a car, if you want a house, the 
Those finances depends on your credit score. I'm going to buy food and tell you it don't. If you manage your money and do it right, your credit score will go up because you know how to manage your money. Yes. Now you can get double yes. for all your sacrificing yes. that you have been putting in. Amen in your heart. Wow. Yeah, that's good. So every day... Hey, I did, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies, take note. If you say no, it's not his area, let it go. <laughs> Listen, he'll tell you a little bit later. You may need to subcontract that out. And it's all right because then if it gets done right and you won't have to be paying people money that they don't need to have out of your pocket. All right? So every day begins for us. I don't know about you. I don't know about your household. But I want to tell you, if you're not doing it this way, you need to start doing it this way. Every day for us begins with God. Amen. That's right. It is non-negotiable. It is a non-negotiable factor of our life and our marriage. To have real success and to win in marriage, you must have a personal relationship. Apart from God, you are just simply going to fail. You're simply going to fail. Make personal time with God a part of your daily routine. End habit. Your prayer life will determine how you handle adversity and disappointment. And let me tell you something about a prayer life. When we pray together, we anoint one another. Yes, yes. You know, even you have pastors, you have elders and ministers and all, then they anoint the congregation. Yes. But a lot of them that are married don't even anoint their spouse. And when we anoint each other, we anoint each other in our heads, our eyes, our mouth, our ears, our hands, our heart, and our feet. And it's so 